using ratio tables. Uh, before we get started, we might as well review what ratios are really quickly. Uh, ratios are used to compare two quantities. And let's try one out. Let's compare blue to red. So we come over here and we look. We got one, two, three, four blues, two, one, two reds. So you write four to two, or you can write four, two with a colon, and then a two, four to two. Equivalent ratios are a lot like equivalent fractions, so we're familiar with one half being equal to two out of four. Uh, one third is the same as uh, three ninths. And we know they're equal because if we multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same number, we get an equivalent fraction. So one half is the same as two out of four. Equivalent ratios would be to say like two dogs, two, three, cats. You write that also as two to three. We can make equivalent ratios by doing something similar to what we do with fractions by multiplying them both by the same amount. So two to three is also the same as six to nine. And this is really important. It helps us lot, solve a lot of different kinds of problems, especially in cooking and chemistry, all sorts of different situations. Here's one. We have a ratio table and we want to find the missing values. So we can do that a couple different ways. We can use addition and we see that to get from 1 to 2 you have to add 1 and then you gotta continue that pattern and add one to find that this other box right here has to have a value of three. Now if you use addition here it's not going to be adding one because if you add one plus three that's four and four plus one is five that's not nine so it's gotta be a different number. I'm thinking and I'm looking at it I'm seeing that well let's try plus three so three plus three is six six plus three is 9. Here's another one. So we can use addition but we can also use multiplication and if we use multiplication 6 times 2 makes 12. If you remember how we find equivalent fractions if we do it to the denominator of the fraction we also have to do it to the top to the numerator. So 6 times 2 is 12. 4 times 2 is 8. Now you say to yourself, well how do I change an 8 into a 24? Well, that could be times 3. And then to follow along here so that the denominator works as well, multiply this one by 3. 12 times 3 is 36. These are all equivalent ratios. So 4 out of 6 is the same as 8 out of 12, and that's the same value as 24 out of 36. Alright, this time we're comparing euros to dollars. This one looks easier to me if I use multiplication. So 5, how do I change that into a 10? Well, multiply it by 2. 5 times 2 is 10. Well, 4 times 2 is 8. Well, now I have an 8. To turn that into a 32, I have to multiply by 4. 10 times 4 is 40. All right, here's a word problem, giving us a situation where we would actually use this in real life. So if you ever go to Menards or Home Depot, uh, and you need to buy paint. Well, they don't have every kind of paint made. They will mix it for you. So, you mix three 
pints of yellow paint for every four pints of blue paint. So we got a ratio of three to four, and we can even put that into a table. So we got yellow and blue. Make my table. And for yellow, we have three. For blue, we have four. You use 12 pints of blue paint. So I'm going to fill in 12 in the blue column. And it's asking how much green paint do you make? Well, that's not part of our table, but we're mixing yellow and blue to make the green. So we need to figure out the yellow first. Well, let's complete our table by look, using multiplication. 4. How do we change that into 12? 4 times 3. Now, to be fair, you have to do that same thing to the numerator or to the other part of the ratio. So 3 times 3 is 9. So to find the amount of green paint, I need to add, because we're mixing it together, I need to add these two parts together. So 9 and 12 make 21 pints of paint.